you mentioned that uh, we should not necessarily be, at least to the degree that we are, worried about the existential risks of artificial intelligence relative to uh, human risks from human nature being an existential risk. What aspect of human nature worries you the most in terms of the survival of the human species? I have to admit, I'm disappointed in humanity, the humans. I mean, all of us. I'm, I'm one, so I'm disappointed in myself too. Um, it's kind of a, a sad state. There's, there's two things that disappoint me. One is how it's difficult for us to separate our rational component of ourselves from our evolutionary heritage, which is, you know, not always pretty, mm-hmm. you know? Um, uh, rape is an is a evolutionary good strategy mm-hmm. for reproduction. Murder can be at times too. You know, making other people miserable at times is a good strategy for reproduction. It's just, and it's just, and, and so now that we know that, and yet we have this sort of, you know, you and I can have this very rational discussion mm-hmm. talking about, you know, intelligence and brains and life and so on. So many, it seems like it's so hard. It's just a big, big transition to get humans, all humans to, to, to make the transition from be like, let's pay no attention to all that ugly stuff over here. <laughs> let's just focus on the interesting thing. What's unique about humanity is our knowledge and our in- in- intellects. But and, the fact that we're striving is in itself amazing, right? The, the fact that we're able to overcome that yeah. part. And it seems like we are more and more becoming successful I, in overcoming I, that I, part. That is the optimistic view, and I agree with you. Yeah, But I worry about it. I, I'm not saying... I'm worrying about it. I think yes. maybe that was your question. I still worry yes. about it. Yes. Um, you know, we could be end tomorrow because some terrorists could get nuclear bombs and, you know, blow us all up. Who knows, right? Um, the other thing I think I'm disappointed is, uh, and it's just, I understand it. It's, I guess you can't really be disappointed. It's just a fact is that we're so prone to false beliefs. We, you know, we have a, a model in our head. The things we can interact with directly, physical objects, people, that model is pretty good. And we can test it all the time. Right, I touch something, I look at it, I talk to you, see if my model's correct. Mm-hmm. But so much of what we know is stuff I can't directly interact with. I can't. I only know because someone told me about it. Yeah. And so, so we're prone, inherently prone, to having false beliefs because if I'm told something, how am I going to know it's right or wrong? Right. And so then we have the scientific process, which says we are inherently flawed. So the only way we can get closer to the truth is by looking for. Um, contrary evidence. Yeah. Um, like this uh, conspiracy theory, this this theory that scientists keep telling me about that the earth is round. Uh, as far <laughs> as I can tell, when I look out, it looks pretty flat. To yeah. Me. So yeah, there is, there is a tension, but it's also, um, um, I tend to believe that we haven't figured out most of this thing, right? <laughs> Mo- most of nature around us is a mystery. And so it, um, but that doesn't worry. Does that worry you? I mean, it's like, oh, that's that's like a pleasure, more to figure out, right? Yeah, that's exciting. Yeah. But I'm, I'm saying like, there's going to be a lot of quote unquote wrong ideas. I mean, I've been yeah. thinking a lot about engineering systems like social networks and so on, and I've been worried about censorship and thinking through all that kind of stuff because there's a lot of wrong ideas. There's a lot of dangerous ideas. But then I also read a history. Uh, read history and see when you censor ideas that are wrong. Now, this could be a uh, small scale censorship, like a young grad student who comes up, who like raises their hand and says some crazy idea. Yeah. A form of censorship could be, I shouldn't use the word censorship, but I like, know what you mean. Uh, yeah, just like, like de incentivize them from, no, no, yeah. no, no, this is the way it's been yeah, done. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're a foolish kid, don't think. Yeah, you're foolish. Uh, so, in some sense, uh, those wrong ideas most of the time end up being wrong, but sometimes end up being wrong. I agree with you. So I don't like the word censorship. Um, at the very end of the book, I, I, I ended up with a sort of a, a, a plea or a recommended course of action. And the best way I could, I know how to deal with this issue that you bring up is if everybody understood as part of your upbringing in life, Something about how your brain works, that it builds a model of the world, uh, how it works, you know, how basic it builds that model of the world, and that the model is not the real world. It's just a model. And it's never going to reflect the entire world. And it can be wrong. And it's easy to be wrong. 
And here's all the ways you can get a wrong model in your head, right? It's not prescribe what's right or wrong. It's just understand that process. If we all understood the process, then I get together and you say, I disagree with you, Jeff. And I said, Lex, I disagree with you that. Well, at least we understand that we're both trying to model something. We both have different information which leads to our different models. Yeah. And therefore, I shouldn't hold it against you and you shouldn't hold it against me. And we can at least agree that, well, what can we look for in, in that's common ground to test our, our beliefs? Mm -hmm. As opposed to so much, uh, as our, we raise our kids on dogma which is this is a fact and this is a fact and these people are bad and, and, and you know, where every, if everyone knew just to, to, to be skeptical of every belief and why and how their brains do that, I think we might have a better world. Do you think the human mind is able to comprehend reality? So you talk about sort of this creating models that yeah. are better and better. How close do you think we get to, um, to reality, there's so the wildest ideas is like Donald Hoffman saying we're very far away from reality. Yeah. Uh, do you think we're getting close to reality? Well, or it, no? it's, I guess it depends on what you define reality. Uh, we are getting, we have a model of the world that's very useful, right? For for basic well, goals for our survival. survival and our the thing pleasure. we want, pleasure, whatever, right? Um, so that's useful. Um, I mean, it's really useful. Oh, we can build planes, we can build computers, we can do these things, right? Uh, I don't think, I, I don't know the answer to that question. Um, I, I think that's part of the question we're trying to figure out, right? Like, you know, obviously if you end up with a theory of everything that really is a theory of everything and all of a sudden everything comes into play and there's no room for something else, then you might feel like we have a good model of the world. Yeah, yeah but we, if we have a theory of everything and somehow, first of all, you'll never be able to really conclusively say it's a theory of everything, but say somehow we are very damn sure it's a theory of everything, we understand, what happened at the Big Bang and how just the entirety of the physical process, I'm still not sure that gives us an understanding of uh, the next many layers of the hierarchy yeah, of abstractions not. that form. Well, also, what if string theory turns out to be true? And then you say, well, we have no reality, no modeling what's going on in those other dimensions that are wrapped into it on each other, yeah. You're right? So, or, or the multiverse, you know? I, I, I honestly don't know how for us, for human interaction, for ideas of intelligence, how it helps us to understand that we're made up of vibrating strings that are like 10 to the whatever times smaller than us. Yeah. I don't, you know, you, you could probably build better weapons and better rockets, but you're not gonna be able yeah, to oh, understand no. intelligence. I guess, I guess- Maybe the, better computers. No, you won't be able, I think it's just more purely knowledge. You might lead to a better understanding of the, of the beginning of the universe. Mm -hmm. Right, it might lead to a better understanding of. Uh, I don't know. I guess I, I think the acquisition of knowledge has always been one where you you pursue it for its own pleasure, um, and you don't always know what is going to make a difference. Or yeah, not, you you know? uh, you're pleasantly surprised by the the weird things you find. 